Happy Monday, Aaron Smith. Hello, Jason Thomas. Happy Monday, indeed, and welcome back to the PWBA podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. It's a beautiful day here in uh, in sunny Texas, mid seventies. Uh, a little cold in, in my office for some reason, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Uh, it's it's a beautiful day. Certainly so, and uh, looking forward to another great guest here on the PWBA podcast. Uh, Taylor Boltice will be joining us here momentarily. Um, came, or she kind of broke through with her first professional win uh, to start 2020. So things were going good for her in 2020 before uh, all this COVID nonsense happened. So uh, she captured her first win, had some momentum uh, winning the Sarasota Regional. Uh, so we're definitely looking forward to talk about that experience with her. She was a great collegiate player as well at uh, Weber International. So uh, with that, let's bring her into the show and uh, start to catch up. So Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. I feel like I haven't seen or talked to you guys in forever. Yeah. It's it's been, too long. been like so fast, but so quick. It's like March again when all this started in just a few months. So yeah. Yeah. It's, we were talking about our coverage plan for 2021 and uh, team trials is our first event. And it was, it was like, we actually did a team trials in 2020. It's hard to believe, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it's weird. It was unreal. That's where it all started for me, I guess. Yeah. And are you planning on bowling this one coming up? I am. I am. I'm sad that we're not in Vegas, though, but I am. Uh, I will be participating. So that will start my year off again. Hopefully nice. better than last year's scenario. Well, you've had you've had some good performances at team trials. It just seems like. You, you don't you you're you struggle to put the whole week together right right yeah. yeah so i always have my beginning stretch it's always really good i have good i mean i've been bowling since i was 15 in those events i think and a few times made some good runs at you know top 20 at least um the last few years and it's always my my last day i i, I really can't even tell you what it is it's i don't feel like it's nerves and, um, but I'm, I'm not really sure. My, my last day usually is a kind of tanker and it's kind of sad, but it's usually <laughs> the end of the day. It's not even like the beginning of the day. The beginning of the day goes well. It's usually like the last couple games that it just, I feel like it gets away from me. And I don't know. So hopefully this year being in uh, Indianapolis, maybe we will, uh, it will be a little bit different. Yeah. Change, change the mojo a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you, you, like I said, you, you have, I mean, some, some incredible days. I mean, you've had some days where you've just destroyed the field. Yeah. So I, you know, I would, I, I would expect at some point for you to be able to figure out how to put the whole week together and, and uh, you know, either make a run at winning even, I would think. My, my breakthrough's coming, I tell you though. So I'm feeling, feeling pretty good about 2021. So let's, let's hope all the stuff is left here in 2021's. We're not going to talk about 2020 anymore. Really <laughs> <laughs> bring it up. Just gonna stay in 2020, and we're just gonna leave it there. Yeah, and I, I yeah, I mean, you said let's not bring it up, but but I, we we just saw about your cat, which you know, I mean, you probably couldn't make 2020 any worse, right? So we'll, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's you know when it rains it pours, uh, and 2020 has been one of those things. Um, it's just been the last couple of months have been kind of rough, but I tell you what, if anybody's going through it, get back up because 2021 is right around the corner and we got to keep, keep pushing forward. So um, regardless of what 2020 brings, it hasn't been very good for anybody. I mean, there has been so much loss in the last few months that I am completely devastated by. And a lot of it's with our, you know, bowling friends. So my prayers go out to everybody who's lost somebody recently and, Losing a pet's not not easy either, and I know it's not as tragic as you know some of the other losses. But uh, I think the hardest part for me was coming home to find him that way, um, and just not knowing what happened. So I think that's I think that's the part that I struggle with the most. So I'm just hoping that it wasn't painful and uh, that he went peacefully. So that's there's that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I've lost, I've lost animals that way too. And, and yeah, you do feel bad. Um, but you know, I, I think you should feel good that you gave your cat a great life and yes, right. I have another little monster. So if you hear him 
talk, it's because he's walking around and I think he's still kind of confused. He's not really sure what the deal is, but when I close the door, he like cries at the door. So I've left it open for him to freely speak during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to, so we'll see. Yeah, it's like it's like a Disney movie on the PWA podcast. We often have animal guests you know, jump in and out of the show. So. Yeah, he's, he's walking around, but other than that, uh, it's all right. <laughs> so we are very sorry for that, but uh, and, you know, just uh, as we talked about 2020, uh, I, I know in Florida where you're at, uh, that's been a pretty lively state for bowling. Yes. Uh, throughout the course of the past few months. So have you been able to uh, kind of stay busy with competing, practicing and all that? Kind of how's that portion of uh, 2020 been going for you? I really have, I have more time to be practicing, which I should. So uh, shame on me for not practicing as much as I, I should be and as much time that I have. Um, but believe me, knowing that the PWBA is coming back and that Team Charles is right around the corner, uh, you will find me practicing a lot in December and coming the end of November. Uh, it is the holiday season, but um, there's still going to be plenty of time to get out there. Um, right, I, I just have so much free time right now with uh, working from home instead of with the uh, hotel. So um, Florida has been super busy. We are, are pretty much blessed that there has been basically a tournament every weekend. Um, I don't think there's been a weekend that there's been like absolutely nothing to bowl. Um, even if it's a couple hour drive or so, um, the, the, the weekends are, are really busy in Florida. Um, so I have had the opportunity to bowl everything that I've wanted to bowl, which is very nice. Um, obviously, I didn't bowl this weekend, um, which there was a tournament to bowl, but I didn't uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so I just kind of took the weekend off um, to, you know, hang out with some friends and just bring some of the good vibes back before I, before I get back out there. Um, there is the women's St. Pete um, tournament this weekend. It's like, I, I think it's like a state kind of deal, uh, which I'll be bowling with the uh, PWBA star Giselle. So we, we're bowling doubles together this weekend. So that'll be cool. Um, and so there's Florida's, Florida's been good. We've been, we've been blessed to be one of the ones to open and have the availability to bowl. So I'm, I'm very happy that that, that uh, fell in my favor, at least being in Florida. Nice, nice. Hey, I, I know you have been, you know, put a lot of focus the last, I don't know, probably two years or so on fitness. Um, and, and uh, you know, I know you've, you've um, lost some weight and also, um, you know, look, you just look like you're in incredible shape. What, what did you do to, uh, you know, do that? And how, how did you go about it? What made you decide you wanted to do it? And um, what did you do to get there? A lot of it came from bowling long blocks and knowing that like I needed more of my energy towards the end of the block. So it was more like a stamina thing. Um, and also it was for just like a professional appearance. I, I think for me, like fitting into my jerseys better and uh, being able to just live that healthy lifestyle. I've seen it in so many athletes and I've done so many readings and watched so many videos and realized that that lifestyle was something that I wanted to do for myself for professional bowling. I'm um, knowing that we were going to be long hours on our feet and doing obviously something uh, physical. I needed to put myself in a better position to be able to go for a longer period of time without feeling tired or exhausted. Um, so, I mean, a lot of bowling is in your legs too, right? So I needed to make sure that that was a, a part of me that was going to be able to keep up with what we were doing. Um, so not only did I make that decision for health reasons and seeing like so many things and, and doing all the reading and like quarantine, you know, that didn't help with like not being able to do much. You have to find something to do. So more so I started running and just getting out of the house. And, and that was one of the, you know, the exercises that could put me in an environment to not be stuck inside all the time. Um, so I really just made that decision as an athlete and uh, as a person for, for myself and just to become a better me. And I felt like that was, the start of becoming a better athlete and a professional athlete at that, um, getting myself in, in the best shape that I could be for when 2020 was coming around. Um, I realized that that's what I wanted to do. So. That's awesome. You, what did, what exactly, I mean, you talked about running, but what, were there any other changes that you made in your, in your diet and, and, um, 
an exercise I, routine? And then what impact did it have on your bowling? Um, it, it, I could definitely tell the difference in being able to to bowl for a longer period of time without feeling tired. Um, and I think that came from giving myself the the exercise and the energy and realizing what I could put my body through. Um, I didn't really change much in my diet, obviously cutting out things like sugary, like soda, which I don't really enjoy soda all that much anyway, but, um, cutting out like juices that have sugar in it. Cause you know, I, I drink a lot of water, but water obviously sometimes can get super boring. Like when you drink it every single day, all the time. So you have to find some things to do with like, you know, I have, I always have one of these with me and, uh, <laughs> so, uh, lemon is like a huge thing for me. Like I put lemon in water all the time, but so I just cut out things like that and, you know, tried to lay back on like snacking. And when I do, like, I never brought snacks to bowling. Now my backpack is filled with like granola bars and things like that, because I realized halfway through my blocks that like, it's been however many hours and I haven't eaten anything and doing all the readings that I was doing, realized that your body needs something to fuel it. And I think that helped a lot with my energy too during bowling. So I could definitely tell my game has started to go in the right direction once I started to lose some of the weight. And um, I just felt much better. Like my body felt healthier. I feel like my mind was more clear. And just being in that healthy mindset, I think it helped bowling uh, physically and mentally. Um, I wasn't thinking about it so much. And just being able to bowl for, for how long I could and not feel tired was, was huge for me. Like, I, I think it started right after that, um, in trials, I was also sick in trials, so I, I really can't count that. But, um, even the year before that, I realized those long days, if you don't put your body in the right place, you bowling is affected, you know, how fast you can throw it and, you know, like sometimes my, my mind just wasn't where it is. And I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to stand here because I'm, I'm not feeling it or I'm too lazy to do this. And because my body was tired. So being able to stay aggressive and uh, stay stable at the line was something that working out came with. And um, I just feel so much more comfortable on and off the lanes with the direction that I'm going with that. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, talking about the longer days and longer formats, uh, you know, to kick off the 2021 season, the uh, PWBA kickoff classic series is uh, just uh, a couple months away. January is going to be here and you're one of the top 48. Uh, so you got a direct entry into the event. Uh, is that something already on the schedule, ready to go? Already on the schedule. You guys All right, you fantastic. plan to see me there. Excellent. Nice. You already got your entry in? Uh, not yet, but okay. um, I'm doing my currently my safe sport. So trials oh, yeah. and uh, the the entry and everything will be complete at the end of this week. So once a safe sport is complete, so nice, nice, that's awesome. Looking forward to seeing you here. It's a home game for us. We we get to sleep in our own beds. That's really. right. <laughs> don't rub it in. Not all of us. But well, I'm yeah. Don't again. worry. We have we'll have plenty of nights out on the road uh, this week as we went through our schedule uh, yeah. last week. So yeah. But uh, so after uh, you know some of the uh, obviously with no tour in 2020, uh, kind of getting the news that the schedule is coming, getting to see getting to see 20 events. Uh, you know what, what what were your first takes away from uh, the new and improved schedule in 21? Big, big changes. I was actually really excited to hear, um, you know, it's incredible how, how much they've put into it. So even seeing like our, our prize fund and what that is, yeah, we lost, you know, TV, but, but bold TV is there. And, um, so there's, I, I was impressed honestly. And, and the schedule is, is obviously much different than what we're used to seeing. I wasn't expecting a schedule to come that soon because usually we start our season, uh, later in the year. Um, so to hear that we started in January was quite exciting. Um, and not to mention three events, you know, all together, which I think, um, I feel like if people can plan their schedules like that, that's going to make the difference because instead of flying out every single weekend for one event, you know, you're flying out and you're going to get to bowl three events, um, compete in three of them and then, you know, on your way. So, uh, I'm, I was excited and, uh, more excited to know that it was coming sooner than later. Uh, cause we were all, kind of afraid that, you know, maybe it was going to be postponed again, just because of how unpredictable everything is with COVID and whatnot. So it really 
put a downer on our 2020, but uh, the women are incredible. Uh, so to watch us bowl is I'm excited for, even if I wasn't competing, I love watching the women bowl. We are absolutely incredible when it comes to like, you know, the best bowling against the best. And uh, it's definitely not something people are going to want to miss. So they are definitely going to want to subscribe to watch what we got going on because we missed 2020. So the fire is only going to be much, uh, you know, more come 2021 when we get to compete against each other. So uh, we're all going to be out for the win. So I'm sure it is going to be uh, really cool to see. Yeah, for sure. And and uh, we're running a promo right now for Bull TV. So if, if you're uh, interested in a subscription uh, for the whole next year, it's just uh, $49.95, which is low, yeah, oh, cool. yeah, yeah. very low price. Works out to just over four bucks a month, which yeah. is one Starbucks a month. I mean, man. <laughs> <laughs> My drink's not $4. I feel uh, like mine's like I, seven. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like one every two months for you. Yeah. <laughs> I have like a, I have like a book when it comes to Starbucks. I like pull up and I'm like, just give me a second. And it's like <laughs> 17 things long. She's like, uh, anything else? And I'm like, yeah. And uh, four pumps of, you know, like she's like, That's okay. Here. You got the, you got the long Starbucks order. Yeah. I, I am like the simplest. Just give me the, 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 you know, grande drip. That's it. I'm just a boring I can't even go that far. Like when we're at, uh, where were we at? Uh, Texas Station had this had the Starbucks uh, for U.S. Women's Open, and I would just go up there and I would just ask for coffee, please. And call back <laughs> that. Yeah, that was. No, I'm the iced white mocha, sweet cream, cold foam, all the good stuff. And yeah, can't have that every day though. That's that's not good, but definitely, definitely <laughs> when, a pleasure when, every when once in a while. When you need that pick me up, that's uh, yeah. that sounds like the right type of order. So. Like it's like a dessert, <laughs> so you gotta like. Only have it once in a while. <laughs> but uh, as we uh, just finish this shameless plug of Bull TV, uh, <laughs> where you also get to see Taylor Bull at Team USA Trials. Uh, you know, your your win at the Sarasota Regional also on Bull TV, and that'll be a big part of the uh, schedule throughout the regional schedule, 14 events scheduled for 2021. But let's go back, way back to January. Uh, you mentioned some of the struggles at Team Trials and how it was nice to kind of bounce back with that performance. But, uh, you know, just talk us through that. I, I know that... We, we usually say, talk us through that week. That's only one day event, but that's, uh, that's okay too. Still a lot of bowling. To yeah. Get to the step ladder and then uh, to eventually win. But, uh, you know, kind of talk us through that, getting to the step ladder finals. And, uh, you know, you came out of the gates firing in the championship match, I believe the front six on the way to the victory. But, uh, you know, just what was it like to kind of find yourself in that zone, put yourself in position to win and then get the job done? Um, it was absolutely an incredible feeling to believe that 2020 started off that way. And then for it to come to a complete stop was kind of miserable, but um, I'm going to take that win into the beginning of this year and just pretend like that started it all again, because I felt like 2020 was definitely going to be uh, my year. Um, but I'm feeling more confident and, you know, better than ever knowing that that was like my first win. And obviously it being so close to home, my dad getting to witness that was also cool. Um, so that day after coming off of obviously trials being uh, such a wreck with being sick, when I got home and I knew that that regional was so close to home, the one thing I told myself was I am not missing this. The day before I wasn't feeling well and I was like, I can't go. Like I, I literally can't. I woke, I, I basically drugged myself the day before with medication for like all day. And I'm like, I am waking up tomorrow. I'm going to feel better and I'm going to bowl. So even though I had like still some congestion, I felt so much better. And uh, my dad was like, you know, giving me a cough drop every three frames, like here, you know, he medicated cough drops to like get me through. Um, so grateful for that because they, they ended up actually working out. Um, but to start the day off, I, I really wanted to start with like a clear head. Um, so I didn't want to bring trials into that. I was like, yeah, it didn't go well, but don't think about that coming into this. This is new. I'm in a new environment. I'm in a new place. I, you know, I, fix some surfaces on some stuff and, and was like, everything, just let it go clear head. And, uh, you know, made sure like my, everything fit well, changed the tape and everything. And, um, so my momentum started, I mean, like it, I just figured it out. And, and I felt like I knew I was so proud of myself for that tournament because I'm like the worst at like wanting to fight something if it's like working, but I'm not getting the result. Like I'll fight it instead of like ball changing and realizing that something can be better. I am the queen at fighting it 
to like the very end. And uh, that tournament, I was like, I'm not going to fight a ball change at all. If I feel like it's time to change, I'm literally just going to pick it up and change in the middle of the game because that is what it's calling for. So I tried not to fight myself on that, um, which ended up working out in my favor. I mean, I think it was coming down to like, the, I don't know, the game before last and I struck the first two shots. And I think at six, I left like a three, six, nine, ten, and then I did it again. And then I was like, I literally ball changed right after that second. And I was like, this is not it. And then I ended up shooting two, whatever, because frame four, I was like, this isn't it. So I knew uh, that that's what I wanted to do. Um, so throughout the day, I trust my changes. I trusted my ball changes, my moves. Um, and I tried to stay within myself and not look around, you know, like I started last game, it was coming close. And I was like, all right, don't start score searching now for who's around you, who's close. And, you know, Alyssa was about to shoot a big game to like possibly go around me. And I was like, don't, you know, I didn't want my shots to start being affected. So I, I literally just tried to stay within my head. And I think that was, uh, that's what got me there. Um, and, uh, then finding out, you know, you made it at first game to bowl um, in the step ladder. I, I tried to stay calm. I kept going to sit by myself to like not put myself any pressure on myself. And the one thing I took from college bowling actually is not to watch their shots because if they carry something I don't, how frustrating is that? So I was like, all right, don't watch. So I kept my head down, you know, looked at my shoes and, and let her bowl and whatever was going to happen was going to happen. I can't control it anyway. So don't put myself through watching to be frustrated if she got a better carry than I did or whatever the case is. Um, and then uh, spare shooting is what won that though, you know, so we, neither one of us were like, you know, lights out here. So I, I ended up making one more spare than she did. And, that, and that's what, you know, won that game. Um, going into last game, I having the front six, I just felt so comfortable. I was like, all right, I just came off a game where spares mattered, make a small change and get away with it. And sure enough, uh, it just fell in my favor for sure. But I threw some of the best shots all day that last game. Um, Cause I knew I came this close. I wasn't leaving without the win, especially knowing that my dad was there. And I was like, we've come this far and we didn't come this far to come this far. So we're going to make it all the way. And uh, sure enough, there was the win and, and, uh, it was, it was an incredible feeling for sure. Yeah, we got a question. You talked about your dad uh, from uh, from Tony, just asking if your dad's planning on coming out and watching you bowl a lot this uh, this next year. Oh, I am hoping so for sure. Uh, it's something that he loves doing. Um, so if he can get the time off, uh, he for sure will be there. He, he runs his own business, so it's much easier than, than most, you know, to get the time off. And he, he usually always makes time. He won't be at the first events at the classic. I don't think they're letting, I don't know if we really talked about like spectators being allowed yet. Um, so I know they did mention on our call that for now there wasn't going to be. Um, but, uh, if trials is allowing spectators, I'm sure he, he'll, he'll want to be there. So we, he'll definitely come to that. Um, but for the tour sake, he will come to whatever he is allowed to per rules, I guess, for now um, on the centers and where we are. Um, so we'll have to get some more information about that to find out if he can come. But if he can, he will be. And I think that also is going to drive my season two when he's there. There's literally nothing more than I want uh, to win a title for him, you know, than for myself, even on my shoes, which is why I was looking at my shoes the whole time in Sarasota. I have a piece of tape on my shoes that says do it for dad. So if I can't do it for myself, I want to do it for dad um, to make him proud. So uh, if he can travel, he sure will. That's awesome. Did your dad get you introduced to bowling or did you, is your coat your first coach or? Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, he was a bowler for a while. Um, he ended up hurting his knees. So it, it, you know, it didn't really go in his favor there. He used to play baseball too. So a lot of the, you know, knee issues came from that. And um, so he just couldn't keep up with it and, uh, he stopped and I started bowling. Uh, so did my sister, but I took off with it collegiately and, and took off with it on a more competitive level. Um, so he kind of, he's living his dream through bowling through me, um, which I find to be very special. So that's why I also want to do it so much for him because he didn't get the opportunity to. So what better than to watch your kid do it? That's awesome. Very awesome. Shout out to your dad. I always love seeing him at events. He's Always one of the guys coming up chatting him. with us. So he'll always talk to you. I think he's listening to this. He he, he talked to anybody about anything. 
for a really long time. So uh, I know he he loves uh, to talk to you guys and see you guys as much as I do. So yeah, I hope hope he's doing well. And uh, yeah, that's uh, you know that that was going to be one of the questions a little bit further down. But since it's relevant right now, let's bring it up. Uh, family is obviously very important to you. So uh, and you, and you talked about what that what that win would mean with him there winning on the national tour. You've you've had the opportunity to win some big events with him there already, but just uh, you know. What, what has family meant to you throughout this journey? Um, it well, it would not be possible without family. So uh, family is, I mean, it's so much to everybody, right? But like for me, it is like the, the support and the backbone is what's so important because I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without my parents. Um, you know, I would be having to work full time and, you know, providing for myself if it wasn't for them. And why I'm so blessed with the parents that I have is, they never ask me why. Like if I want to do something, it's 110% support at the beginning and there's no questions. Um, it is whatever they can do to make it possible for me to live the dream that I want to live. And I find uh, I, I'm so incredibly blessed. I can't, I can't literally can't give them what I want to give them right now for everything they've done. Um, especially my dad, you know, he would pick up extra work or whatever he needed to do to, to make sure I had what I, I needed to be successful. Um, you know, before I was on staff of the company that I'm so blessed to get, you know, bowling balls from, uh, you know, they could be quite expensive. Bowling is an expensive sport. Um, so for when I was a kid, I was always asking for more and more and they always found a way to give it to me. So uh, I couldn't be more grateful for the family that I have and the sport that I have and knowing that my dad loves to travel and be there and he cannot stand when he can't go. Like it is the most miserable thing when he can't be there to watch. Um, even local tournaments, you know, he's like, all right, text me every game, you know, to make sure he knows what I'm doing. And if it's like not a great game, he'll know because I'll like skip <laughs> him for a little bit and I'll get the question marks or the hello, how's it going? And so I'm like, all right, I went 220, 220, 170, and I'll like I'll avoid it, but he'll know. And then uh, once the day goes on, if I don't respond, he'll call me and he'll be like, so not good, good, whatever. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's always looking for like the live stream if I can. I, you know, I wish there was a way to, to bring a live stream with me when the events don't live stream it because he, he just loves to see that much. Um, so, I, you know, I hope to have a family of my own one day and, uh, you know, to do this and support you know, my kid is as much as my parents did for me. Um, and uh, so I, I don't know what I would do without him, to be honest. That's awesome. Uh, you know, you, we talked a little bit about your, your plans for, for 2021. Um, you know, what, what are your goals for, for the tour for, for next year and beyond? Um, I'm, I plan on being around the tour for as long as it is around. Uh, I will do whatever I can do to make sure that I have the opportunity to compete um, with every event that it's possible for me to be at. You, you guys know me. I'll be there if I can. Um, long term, like I, I foresee myself winning a few titles, you know, like that's that's on my my list of things to do. I, I you know, I want a major. Um I want more titles under my belt. I, I don't want to stop at one, you know, regional title or whatever. Um, so it is, it's definitely something on my mind going into 2021 that I have the opportunity to, you know, grab a title here and there. And what better than three right together, you know, to start having a chance to win one of those three or, or more like, you know, I think we're all in that mindset right now. Um, so it's definitely going to be something to keep with me all year long that what the feeling was like winning that even though it was a regional title what that feeling was like i am going to take that with me and uh, into the year and and just remember what i did and uh, try to be more focused on um that and not you know letting up on the gas pedal as they say like coming towards the end uh, my goal is to start figuring it out faster um, when I do get lost and not to get frustrated, I, I've been really, really good on not getting too frustrated too quick. I've kind of like during bowling, if it's not going my way, let it go a little bit in order to continue the next frame. Because if I keep, you know, living in the past on the last frame, it's literally not making anything better as we go along here into the game. So if I can, uh, bowling for me has been pretty good recently. Like, Spare shooting has been at its most, and uh, I, I want to take that on tour with me. So I, I hope that's <laughs> it's, it's always an so, important thing on tour with the the conditions yeah, usually being it has felt, fairly difficult. 
felt phenomenal lately. Uh, so, and, and I felt more comfortable than ever um, in my spare ball, which I struggled with sometimes like the feel and I don't know, just like sometimes it just goes away and I don't understand it. Like I can miss three spares in a row and I'm like, what the heck just happened? Like literally I have no idea. It's actually a couple weeks ago. I was in the, in the cut and I ended up shooting 150 last game because it literally went open, 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 open to start the game. And I'm like, what the heck? I literally had no idea what happened. And um, so I want to be able to uh, take out what happened last and continue moving forward in a game in order to like shoot 180, 190 instead of those 150 games that really, you know, put a downer on your block or, or whatever the case is. Um, so I would like to uh, keep scenarios positive moving forward in the game. So on tour, I, I definitely want to have that with me. And for 2021, I definitely want to stay more within myself, more focused each block and uh, just just make it happen. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you, you obviously haven't bowled on tour for all that long, but are there some things that you have identified that that you feel like you need to you know improve in order to you know get to the next step? I think a lot of it comes from me again, like losing it. And once I lose it, I lost it. Instead of like trying to figure it out, I like, okay, this game is over and I'm only in frame five when that's really not the case. Um, so at, it's come down to every pin literally matters. Uh, and, you know, I learned that in college, get count or whatever the case is and going into, uh, you know, like it's, it's a matter of pins, you know, when you're going to make a cut. So like getting every single one that you possibly can is important. And, um, I think I've, I've seen that a lot on tour. Like you can miss it by a few and you're like, God, frame two. And I had left six, I got one, like, you know, whatever, whatever that is, you, you put so much pressure on yourself from before. And then that gives you a miserable mindset either for the rest of the day or going into the next block. And I just want to be more, more focused and more stable all year long um, with, mentally, I think a lot of it's going to come because my physical game is obviously there. And with me being healthier and all that stuff, it, that's going to be there. Right. So now it's the emotions and the mentality and keeping my, my mindset on something and, and not letting it drift too far and knowing that you can come back from anything. So uh, if there's more frames ahead and more games ahead that I need to not let that affect what's going forward and just, uh, do that for myself. And I think that's going to be important in 2021, especially with how uh, intense the year is going to be because we've been at a competition for so long where, you know, some people are going to be at their best, you know, at, at one of these events because they've missed it. And, and, and so will I. Um, so I want to make sure that that's, that's something uh, that I keep. Yeah. I mean, it feels like we, we've talked to a lot of younger players, especially recently on the podcast. You know, you'd mentioned Giselle and, and I know some of the others had, had expressed this as well. But a lot of them have expressed that they, they feel like um, they, they have trouble keeping up with the transition um, yes. as much as some of the more experienced players like a Shannon O'Keefe or a Kelly Kulik or a Liz Johnson. Is that something you feel like you've had to work on as you've come out on tour? For sure. I still feel like that's sometimes my issue, even bowling locally. Um, I, I completely miss it. And and a lot of it's like more in depth of things that this is why I have coaches and ball reps and dad, you know, like uh, because a lot of it's like, you know, topography, you get into that and then you get into who you're following, like stuff that I normally don't immediately think about. And a lot of it, I blame myself and I'm like, wait, it may not it may not be me. You know, I, I could be throwing it good, but if one doesn't do what you want it to do, now start thinking more about the, you know, the high, the bigger players. Like, what would they be thinking right now if this was doing, you know, on, on lane one and two, this was perfect. And now you go down to, I don't know, four and five or three, whatever. And you're like, it, it's not doing what you want it to do. Uh, now it's now it's time to start thinking more advanced. Um, and, and that's a part of my game that I definitely want to improve on. Um there's so much that I can prove on, on the school side of bowling, you know, uh, with, with what certain balls are doing more so than others and, and lane play and, and all that stuff. So that's an important part of me going into 2021 too, is, is utilizing what I have, um, and what I know and putting more of the school into play when I do get lost. Um, and 
So I, I definitely need to like my journal. I got a new one for 2021. Like we're, I'm throwing out the old one. I don't want to see any of the other stuff. <laughs> and you know, 2020s was blank, but whatever. Like there's some, you know, like sad faces and things like when it didn't go my way, all gone. Now we're starting over and we're going to have, you know, more positive uh, side of things and putting some like sticky notes in there to like go to when I, you know, when I open at a tournament, I'm not going to know which one it is, but like reminding myself of something positive in order to um, not get so, so mentally down if it's not going my way. Cause sometimes you got to remember that if it's not going your way, that there's always going to be, there's always going to be more. So like, don't, you know, be so detrimental, uh, you know, mentally like flying home and being miserable for what, you know, when you can pick yourself up and and go get it again. So I want to do that this year too. Yeah. Yeah, You you talked about a little earlier, you talked about, you know, being stubborn about making ball changes sometimes. And I know, you know, a player like a Shannon O'Keefe, one of the things that she's learned, I think over the course of the tour is, is knowing when she's throwing it good enough. Right. And, and, I think when uh, for a long time she was obsessed with th- with throwing it perfectly, and I think she, you know the thing that got her over the hump was realizing, hey, if you just throw it good enough and it's still not working, it's something else. Not it's not me. It's, it's something else. And a lot of times, players don't know what good enough really is for them. Right. And so, do you feel like that's something that um, that you need to work on as well, and that you're working on? I I definitely have been working on my good enough because I this even in bowling locally I I'm I'm definitely good enough you know to to cash in into whatever against being local local bowlers or or whatever um, and I know what my feel is and when I can feel that I'm throwing it good enough um, so it, it's definitely something that can improve to understand a little bit better when I. Uh, you know, jumped on staff with vice and I switched all my thumbs. Um, huge difference in, in being able to make the ball change when you have an interchangeable, uh, everything feels the same. And I think that was huge for me too. Um, going into trials last year, uh, I, I did it right before trials, you know, by the way, uh, I literally up Cecil and I just mid season was like, change it up. We're switching all your thumbs because I was fighting all the time, swelling and shrinking. And when we travel and it's cold or it's too hot or whatever. And, um, that was a huge change in my game is going to thumbs like that because now I'm more comfortable than ever mid game. Like I'm like, Oh, I need the ball change. Okay. No problem. This thumb feels great. And this ball is just not doing what I needed to do. So pop that thumb out into another one and, and off we go. Um, so that's definitely helped my good enough, you know, cause I know that this, this one's not working, something else may, um, and, and it will feel the same. So that is big for tour players too. Like as a professional athlete, that was, that was something that I needed to do. And I never pulled the trigger on cause I was afraid of them breaking or losing a thumb or forgetting it. Like having all these things, I'm like, what could go wrong instead of what can go right? <laughs> uh, hello so i switched it and now i'm like the anxiety whatever every time i leave i'm like opening my backpack i'm like guys i'm so okay guy, like that's the one thing i need to make sure i have because if you don't have those you can always buy like bowling <laughs> at a center but you don't have the thumbs you're you're in trouble so um but definitely definitely a huge change and, and, a, and a big win for me uh changing to those and and having the ability to do that what can go right? I, that's going to be my new 2021. Because <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I often work in that uh, type of mindset. So, so what can go wrong? What can go right? That's going to be. I should have done it in college, to be honest with you. But yeah. Uh, speaking of college, uh, you know, we mentioned at the top of the show, uh, just a fantastic career at Weber International. Uh, went went in a handful of a uh, couple of titles as well along the way. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I'm sure being in Florida and that being pretty close to home was probably uh, a driving factor and obviously the great coaches in the Kegel facility, but uh, kind of tell us about your journey to make it to, uh, to Weber and uh, you know, obviously a lot of great moments and memories from that as well. Oh yeah. Uh, I have, I owe everything to that program for who I am today. Not proud of the person I was before I entered that program. I was very self-centered. I was very all about myself. I didn't really understand the aspect of team bowling um, until it came to that program. Um, I, nobody, not, not a lot of people know, but before, you know, being recruited as a kid, 
um, going to school. I actually went to a school in Georgia um, to bowl prior to going to Weber. Um, and not to speak, I'm not going to mention it, but some people know, but not to speak badly of it. The program was absolutely horrible. There, there wasn't a program. Like the coach was never there. The girls were always fighting. And I'm like, this is, this is miserable. And I'm like, when I could be home with people, you know, closer to home. And I was there for nine days, by the way, this coach was basically like, you're the best bowler on the team. You do it. I'm like, that, and that's all I want to hear for. I'm literally here to learn about bowling and you're not doing that. Um, so I, I left and, uh, literally packed my dorm, dropped it off at my aunt and uncles who lived not too, they lived like three hours. I packed my whole dorm in my little Veloster, by the way. So I made two trips. It was like a three hour trip each way and flew to Queens the next day from Georgia. Like it was, it was like, it was like easy as that. And uh, came home and, and I'm driving home from Georgia after the tournament. My dad was like, if I can get you into Weber tomorrow, are you going? I was like, heck yeah, that was it. So my dad called the school, called Randy, had some things, you know, to do and boom, started, you know, mid semester and caught up and, and, uh, had that going for me. And that program, if anybody's listening, thinking about going to the program, everybody's going to say their program, you know, is the best. And, and I feel that way about Weber, but this program, if you do it, how it's intended to be done and you follow everything that they give you and you do it the right way, you are coming out of that program, a better person and a better bowler, 100%. Um, and, uh, that was me. I have everything to thank Dell and Randy for, for as a person, like the personal conversations we've had, you know, in the office about things and whether, you know, Randy was 110% with me all the time. He knew that sugarcoating things for me wasn't going to work. That is not going to make me better because he knew who I was. He was like, I'm going to tell you how it is real right now, whether this makes you laugh or cry it's going to make you a better person. And I hope he's listening to this because uh, that he, he stuck it to me a lot because he knew that I needed it. Um, so my first two years at Weber were all about me learning how to be a better person, how to be a better bowler, but most importantly, how to accept the team side of things. Uh, you know, when I, my freshman year, when I was benched, I'm like, are you kidding? Like coach, come on. What, what is this about? You know? So I had to learn uh, quickly that that team was what, what it was about being a college bowler. And, uh, that came my junior and senior year, my sophomore year too. Like I understood why, um, but I still wasn't happy about it. My junior and senior year, if I wasn't bowling well, I was like, take me out, put her in, take me out. Like I, this is not for me. I am not it, you know? And uh, I was, you you know, when you are, are a team player, when you are happier for the people bowling than you are if you're ever in. And that's how I came out of the program. Um, when I tell you I see college posts now, I miss college bowling. So I miss team bowling in general. I love team bowling now. It is like my favorite thing to do. If I never had to bowl singles again, I would be okay because I, I literally love team bowling. Um, so, and a lot of that came from knowing that I could still win without even bowling because I have a team. So like, what, what better is that than like, if you don't have it, you can still win and you bowled horrible because your team is, you know, great. Um, so that program literally came with not only the best training facility, you know, ever. And it's a lot of the people behind the scenes too, that, you know, yeah, you have Kegel, you know, the bowling center and the training facility, but you have the people who are making that place run behind the scenes. And what an incredible place. If people have never been like, you need to schedule some time to go see that place and, and work with, you know, the coaches and, and to see that facility. Cause it has come a long way. If you haven't seen it recently, it is, you know, some incredible changes and it is extravagant. And when you walk in, you just be at being out of the program. I get that place for life. What better is that? You know, you can go whenever you want. And as long as they're not busy and, and you get to, you know, practice in one of the world's best training facilities and you get your coaches and, you know, your coaches are right there. And, um, I will, if I had the chance to do it all over again, I would pick Weber 110% and I would pick to be on Randy's team every single time. Like I, it was, it was the best experience of my life. And I uh, owe it all to that program of who I come out of the program being and uh, who I am as a player now has a lot to do with what I did there. And, you know, you got like the Dr. Dean sessions that also help you. And that comes with the program too. And, and what an incredible dude that is. Um, and, and how cool it is to have that at your fingertips and all the tools and gadgets and everything you have there is unbelievable. And not all college teams got that. And I think a lot of people, you know, when we were at Weber, I think I forgot about a lot of that. Like some of those kids had to like 
fundraise to go somewhere. We were blessed. We, we went, we, we had it all. And, um, so just an incredible experience and I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that for anything, but anybody thinking about going or currently going best decision of my life. And not to mention when you're bowling locally, if you look at, you know, the top kids that are, that are bowling, they're all Weber kids. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, there was a tournament that myself, Verity, you know, Colin, Christus, all those kids, we were in the, the top five. And how cool is it to see like current Weber students and Weber alumni at the top and coming to the rise. And uh, that just shows you that that program is doing exactly what it's intended to do, create good bowlers. And we are out there, you know, crushing the top all the time. And um, that's also makes me proud of coming out of a program like that, seeing uh, the standings at local tournaments and knowing that a lot of it is, is Weber. And um, that's really cool to see. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we, you mentioned your junior and senior years, your junior year, uh, Weber ended up winning the ITC against Wichita State. And looking back at that particular title match, looking at it, you know, four or five years ahead, uh, there's there's six, seven, eight PWBA players between both teams, yep. which is pretty incredible. You had Daria and Verdi on your team, uh, Dasha, Sydney, Laura Plazas. Uh, there's probably one or two more that I'm not, not mentioning right now. But uh, I, I've, I've always wondered this because it was such a unique environment for that win. What was it like to win? And this is a, a little tougher question. What was it like to win in Wichita against Wichita State? <laughs> uh, I think we all, you know, went in like hometown for them, right? But like for us, it was like, who cares? We are we are bowling together. Doesn't matter where we are. It's it's us against them. But like. You know, we stayed uh, present. We stayed in our huddle all the time. We didn't watch shots. Um, so to win in Wichita against Wichita, not very many people get to say that, you know, and uh, we do uh, forever. And an incredible win for us. It was extremely, like, humbling to be able to bowl against, uh, to be able to bowl with, you know, you know, those women who are now stars on the PWBA and to know, like, very much so for myself. Um those memories will never go away. I can, I remember that show like it was yesterday all the time. And, um, it was an honor to bowl with them. And same, like, I think the best feeling was when we won turning around and looking at Randy, he was so excited every time. And we all wanted that for him so much because of everything he's done for us for the year. And uh, I know me like watching the show again and again, when they just get that glimpse of Randy in the corner and he's like fist pumping after we struck or it was just that for me was so heartwarming to know that our coach was so proud of what we were doing. Um, and that those, it was, it was, it was incredible. Like that's all, that's the word for it. And uh, I wouldn't change that for anything. Yeah, you, you talked there about, you know, your your passion and emotion and it all comes out in college bowling. You know, I think it, it comes out whether you're, you know, a stoic person by nature or, you know, a passionate person by nature. But I know, you know, watching you bowl, you know, in singles competition, you're a pretty passionate uh, player out there. So where did that come from? And is that something you're 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 you're, you're just comfortable with or is it something you're trying to change or what? where did. I don't think I've changed any of that. Uh, I am who I am on the lanes for, for very much. So every reason I think being able to be excited, um, is, and a lot of that comes from like seeing Shannon O'Keefe bowl, right? She is, she is one of those intense players and I've always looked up to that. And I think when you are bowling well and it is going your way, like you could be quiet, I guess, but like, a lot of that intenseness comes from keeping my motivation going. Like if you are, if you are so close and you struck, you know, to, to, to need it or to make it or whatever the case is, being excited about that for yourself is important. Like why, what am I just going to turn around and be like, I made it. No, <laughs> you made it. You did it. That was for me. And to make the cut or whatever the case is. And um, I think it's important to be, you know, to be fiery and to be intense and especially on tour, those, those women are ruthless, you know, when it comes down to it, we all are. And so to be intense and if you are, if you got it going and you got it going, you're going to let, you're going to let those people know that you have what you have and, um, but don't, 
keep it humble. You know, like I, I had to learn that coming out of college bowling too. You, you want to be humble about it too, because if you don't get too excited and then bomb it and you're like, Oh God, why, why, what was she on for you? <laughs> um, so you, so you? Just make sure you're doing it like in a kind, still respectful, obviously in humble way. Um, but that intense competitor in me has always, has always been there. Um, and I think it just comes from my nature of being wanting to win. Like there's no scenario where I walk into a bowling center and I'm like, I don't want to make the cut. Like, why am I bowling? You know, like I walk in knowing that I, that I want to bowl well and that I want to win. So, uh, yeah, sorry. I don't know what's going on here. (laughs) (laughs) Passionate about the answer. So your bum is falling apart. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, that's all I got. I'm always going to be that. I'm always going to be that way to keep, to keep myself uh, motivated to, to keep going. So. Nice. Nice. I, I personally prefer watching that than. Uh, it's so much more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it makes good TV too. Like when, when you're on it. Um, I, I think a lot of people like that too. Like people are excited in the, some people are screaming for me before I'm screaming for myself. Or <laughs> my dad sometimes, you know? Um, uh, so even, even the fans get, get fired up. And I think it's, it's not only fun to watch, but to be excited about something that you love, a passion is, is the word for that. So if we have passion for what we're doing, you know the players who have passion for what they're doing when they are the way they are when they're when they're about to make it or when they need a strike to win or, or whatever it is. Um, and and we've I've watched some of the best of the best do that. And I think a lot of that comes from uh, or a lot of it in me comes from watching them. And, and Shannon is one of those players that I 110 percent would would watch in in a intense moment every time because she's she's going to get what she what she needs you know and uh i I take a lot of my lessons watching her and and kelly too you know not not so loud you know but so focused and within herself and and i can take so many lessons from so many of the bigger players that we are so lucky to be who's a more experienced than you know the younger players are and we get to bowl with them. You know, you get to watch them and, and bowl alongside them. And I think, um, you know, some of the younger players get a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like maybe shy or nervous to be able to bowl next to them. I don't, I don't think I ever had that. I was always so excited to bowl next to them, but I was never like a crazy fan either. Like I never, it's because I wanted to be them one day. So like I would rather sit back and watch what they're doing than, you know, you know, be fangirlish. Although I've always had those fangirl moments of like being around them. I never got the, the nervousness because I wanted to be, I'm going to be like Shannon O'Keefe one day, you know, like, or I'm going to win like she did one day, or I'm going to need that strike, you know, or whatever, like her one day. And, um, same thing with Kelly and Liz and watching them bowl. You, as, as a kid, I wanted what they have now and bowling next to them. I still do. Uh, you know, and, and even my fire is more lit bowling next to them. I'm like, I'm going to beat you today. Like, because you, that's your goal is to always want to bowl against the bigger players and beat them. And as younger players, that's, that was so much for us as, as kids, like, you know, when you, you beat them or you get to bowl next to them, what an honor, first of all. And it made me a better player watching what they did at the time, like mid game or whatever. Like when I wasn't having it, what is she doing? Not that I could probably do what she was doing as a kid, but like what a learning experience all the time in bowling. And now I don't watch so much because I'm at a level where I can compete. But as a kid, I was always like watching and whatever. Um, So definitely, definitely an honor to get to bowl with some of these women and bowl against them and with them. And, uh, 2021 is going to be the same bowling with them. Like we're, we're going to be, we're going to be something to see come 2021 since we've been out of competition for so long. So if you guys are watching, you better subscribe and watch us. Because <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, getting, I, I'm getting excited to watch, just listen to you talk about it. So yeah, I, I am, I am ready. Like, so yeah, we're we're gonna roll out a new uh, a new motto, Aaron, or a new tagline, Aaron. Uh, twenty and twenty one, twenty PWBA events in twenty one. Wow, right? that yeah, that is like it. that. You like it's that? So cool that we got more events <clears> too <throat> in our season. Like, not only did you know all the changes that were made, we literally just got more events to to bowl against each. Other. Like, I could not be more excited. Yeah, yeah, more we're opportunities excited. there. We're excited about it. Uh, all right, so we talked a lot about bowling. 
let's talk about not bowling for, for the last few minutes of, our, of the show. Uh, what do you like to do when, when you're not bowling? What are some of your hobbies? <laughs> I know a few people are going to laugh about this. Um, you, every bowler right now is into golf. I am in no way, shape, or form into like bowling 18 holes, uh, to playing 18 holes or like nine holes. I love to go to like, it, this is only just recent too. Like last week, my dad and I went to the PGA Superstore and we're hitting golf balls on that simulator. That thing is so cool. I only like hitting the driver as hard and as far as I can <laughs> every single time. Um, so like going to the driving range is something like right now when, you know, when, cause it's an outside thing and it's not limited to like being next to somebody or whatever. Um, so like recently more than ever, uh, hitting golf balls is fun. And my dad is obsessed with top golf. So, uh, we definitely need to go do that soon. Um, other than that, uh, I am like a, I like writing. And uh, I've been into reading and writing recently. Um, and that's more like more fun for me, I guess. Um, I enjoy doing that and uh, listening to like motivational speeches and stuff. But I'm such an artsy person, too. So I love uh, like do it yourself crafts like around the house. And um, so that's kind of my thing. Like I just saw I don't know if you want to call this an, a, a hobby, but like Amazon shopping is more like an addiction. But like. I am an Amazon shopper if I've ever seen one. <laughs> I think there's a package at my door every day. And it's like things you don't even need. You ever see those videos that are like 15 things you never knew you needed off Amazon? <laughs> and you buy them every time and they suck you in. So like I bought this thing. It's a pineapple core. Who needs I don't I don't even I don't remember the last time I bought a pineapple, but I have this thing now that takes out the middle and cuts the rings for you at the same time. Yeah. And you pull it out and hear the inside of the pineapple just comes out. I haven't used it yet, but why did I need that? I don't know, because Amazon said I needed that thing. And uh, so hobby slash addiction is Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. We have a, there, There's a video on Facebook of uh, my wife buying one of those and me using it for the first time. It's pretty funny. Did I miss that? Uh, uh, yeah, well, maybe it, you might have to. My, my wife posts a lot, so you'd probably have to go through a lot of stuff to a lot of, you know, Does it, it, it work, right? I didn't buy this. It's great. Yeah, it, it was awesome. It was incredible. I'm not sure why we needed it, but I think yeah. I might, that might be the only time I've ever used it was that video that we did, but it, it was, yeah. it was pretty neat. And, uh, but my wife has a saying, which probably applies here as well, which is, you don't go to Target to buy what you need. You go to Target and Target tells you what you need. Yeah, exactly. Every time <laughs> I walk in and I'm like, I'm only going for this. I'm not even going to get a cart. And somehow I end up with a basket. Yeah. With little things that are overflowing. I'm like, I should have got a cart. <laughs> so now I'm frustrated that I have to go back and get a cart. Good job. Um, so I completely understand that there. I, yeah. I buy things on Amazon all the time. I'm like, you don't need this. But yes, you do. Yes, you do. For whatever reason, I'm going to have people over one day. They're going to bring a pineapple, and I'm like, I got the thing for you. Let's crack this, baby. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I've got one on. I, I could probably sell on eBay, too. But uh, <laughs> and it is cool. But uh, you talked about writing and reading. What are, what are some of your favorite books and authors? Um, I have so many. I, like, James Patterson is somebody that I read quite often. I think that is definitely uh, – one of my favorites. Um, I'm into like the the mysteries and the the crime like books, and I'm not into like the the love stories or anything like that. Like I like the you know the the mysteries and and stuff like that. Like uh, like Nancy Drew as a kid, I was always into. I always thought she was like pretty cool. And um, so, uh, but like Jay Shetty is somebody that who I listen to often uh, for like a motivational speaker. Um, and there's a lot of them. Like I, I listen to podcasts all the time. And, and most of my, like if I'm driving anywhere is I, I, I adore music. I, I don't think I could live my life without it, but a lot of it recently, like when I'm bowling, I have some motivational speeches on my phone that are not like just people talking, like it has music. So it's kind of intense. Um, but like it, it gets me ready for what I'm about to do. Cause it reminds me of things that I always forget. Our minds are so full of so much stuff. Um, so I've always been a writer, uh, like at heart, but I do it for like myself. Like, a, like I like to journal and stuff like that. Um, I've had so many people tell me that I should probably start a blog or like write like a coffee end table book, you know, cause it's just one of those things. I don't write, I don't want to write a book. I, I like writing like little 
excerpts or things that like remind people about things. Uh, so when I post on Facebook, some of my like motivational things, I am overwhelmed with some of the messages that I receive from people um, about how like they needed that today. Um, so some of the things that I post are not necessarily things I'm going through, but what I understand. Um, and I think that confuses people a lot on social media. Some people don't share what they're going through. They share what they understand. And, and I feel like maybe somebody needed that today. Um, so that's why I do what I do when I write those things. Uh, Cause I feel like if it could help anybody, um, I, then I've done what I needed to do for the day. Um, so I, I did talk about more recently uh, about my social media detox that's coming and I wanted to do it after this, obviously. Um, and uh, before the season starts, but I want to take a couple weeks off um, or maybe just a week, like away from social media to focus more on myself and to prepare myself for, you know, 2021, get back into getting, you know, my body ready, my mind clear. Um, I think, uh, more recently, everybody knows social media has been so, so dark because of like politics and all this stuff like that. It's been such a crazy thing to see. Um, and uh, some of the some of the things that are posting are just not mentally healthy for a, a lot of people, especially me. Like, I, I don't like seeing people be mean and more recently ever than I've seen like less kindness um, out there. So I think I needed to take a break from that, but also to just find myself before this year comes and get myself ready. And I think that's what it's going to come with. So I'm going to take a step back from that for a little bit and focus on me for a few days uh, because I know like our phones have become such such a thing to be sucked into really easily. And uh, I feel like some some of the time that I could have got things done, I was on my phone more more than I should have been like during quarantine. I bought my house and I wanted to, to like paint my kitchen. It's not painted yet. And I've had how many months to do that? So like needed to take a break uh, to do that. So I'll probably do that this week. So if you guys wonder where I am, I'll probably paint my kitchen. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a nice break and and prepare myself for uh, the holidays and to be surrounded by friends, family, and uh, get ready to see you guys too in 2021 because I cannot be more excited to see the people we've missed in 2020. Yeah, how no, different that, it's going to be. You know, it is. It's gonna so. be like a like a reunion. It is. Yeah. We should have one of those, by the way. Like our first stop should be yeah. like a reunion stop. I feel like it's it will be. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to give each other hugs. Yeah, I'm I'm at the point now where like I'm hugging people. Like people are like looking at me. And I'm like, all right, I'm, can I hug you? Because I'm ready. Like I haven't seen. <laughs> much, like if you have a mask on, I have a like. Let's do this because I haven't hugged anybody in a long time. And I'm a hugger at heart. Like when you see people you're excited to see, I'm like, come on, bring it in. Um, so it's definitely going to be difficult not to hug people when the tour starts because. You know, even though I get to see some of the players uh, with, you know, local tournaments, like I see Verity all the time, but to be on tour is going to be so much different in getting to see each other because uh, even though we've all been working at home and, you know, posting on social media, you see us working, uh, it's going to be a different kind of work when we get out there to compete against each other. Yeah. Yeah. We could call it the roll call reunion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> so we're going to have some, I hope she has some good jokes to come in our little, uh, attendance meetings. Oh, so she will, she them, will. I miss those yeah, she, all year she, long. Every tournament, I'm like, I need, I need Tennille's little, little pick-me-ups before we start. Yeah, she's been working on her jokes. I, I, I guarantee you we'll have a good <laughs> crop of them for, for the go. start of the season. <laughs> good. Uh, all right, so last question we always ask. I'm sure you, you know what it is. You've been watching the show. What are your uh, Taylor Boltice binge watch recommendations? Ooh, they have, uh, I have. Oh, we heard that. We heard the cat. Yeah. Oh, here he is. I'll yeah. Come yeah. Here real quick. <laughs> there. <laughs> what a cutie. His name's Oliver. Hi, Oliver. Uh, Hello. <laughs> um, binge watch worthy. Um, Outer Banks is one that I think a lot of people have watched. I think yeah. uh, that was a good one. Um, Oh man, you guys are gonna stump me on this because I, I've watched so much stuff in the last like. What else? You have you should have a, a good list. What, what? Who's Oliver named after? Is it Oliver Twist? Uh, sure, you can go with that. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he was uh, a rescue, and uh, well, I rescued his mom. She had babies, and he was the runt, so I kept him. I don't. I don't know why I named him Oliver. I think uh, it was just cute. Okay. Every girl picks a cute name for a cat. Um, anyway, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I have so much. 
and I can't even give you guys two. So there, there's that. So much, but can't give you two. Um, Favorite movie that you've watched in the last uh, six months? Oh, uh, Olympus Has Fallen. Okay. That, that, I, I recently watched that, and I thought that was such a good movie. Um, Safe Haven is one of my favorite movies. Um, so you like action and... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, like, this time of year is, like, the scary movies you're in, but they don't make good scary movies anymore. They're not, like... They're not like good. I, I I don't know. Like they're kind of weak. Yeah, you know, if you want to watch a really scary movie that's related to social media, watch The Social Dilemma on Netflix. Somebody told me about that, but I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite scary, and it also kind of jives with your whole social media detox thing. Wow. Uh, it will somebody justify that for you. The reason I haven't watched it was because somebody said that. Like they said it. It really brought some attention to things like. You know, and uh, I, I sh I'll probably watch that today. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, little documentary, and it's and it's kind of different. It's it's yeah. it's not just like a dry. Let's listen to a bunch of people talk. I know this is an old one, but Prison Break was one of those that I thought was like binge worthy. It's an older one, but like I I, I enjoyed watching that one too. Yeah. Um. More recently, um, Making a Murder is like a documentary series. Yeah. That one, I'm still not done. I have like two episodes left. And I tell you what, the first at the beginning, I was like, I don't want to watch this anymore. And episode five, I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this for the next three days and get sucked in. And I have two left, but it's it's definitely, if you like the documentary mystery kind of, that was definitely good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Name a couple right now and I'll tell you if I liked it. Well, I mean, the one everyone's talking about right now is The Mandalorian because it just restarted. No, no I haven't not, watched it. Yeah, not a Star Wars fan. Some people are going to be so mad at me for this. I haven't even seen one episode. Oh, wow. Of any of the Star Wars movies? Zero. Wow. <laughs> wow. My best friend is actually like, she has Star Wars tattoos and like they're, it's in her car. She has Darth Vader everywhere. Savannah. If she's watching this, she probably is. She is going to be pissed. She knows that I haven't seen this. <laughs> she, she loved it. And I have not. And it's my best friend for like however many, since we were kids. And I haven't seen one thing and she's obsessed. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big Star Wars fan. Of it. He's it. Oh, yeah. Darth Vader up there and whatnot. But uh, now I'm going to have to watch these too. Well, that's the thing. It's like, I almost, I almost want to tell you not to watch them because it's it's like such a such a cool thing for somebody to say that I've never watched a Star Wars movie. Yeah, um, movies are <laughs> you know, if you if you did it now, I mean, first of all, then you'd have to watch like twenty movies because you, you'd want to watch all of them. But uh, but it's just kind of a neat thing that you know you can say. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Star Wars. I know like the certain sayings like Luke, I am your father. Like I know what that's from. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I have, yeah. and I know who R two D two is, and that's that's all I got. I I don't know. Is Princess Leia a thing? Is that that's from? Yeah. That? Oh yeah. 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 See, I got more than you think, but I have not seen a single thing. Yeah. Uh, there's a great YouTube video. Um, it's it's basically like uh, this guy's friend's girlfriend watched um, the whole Star Wars trilogy, but she wasn't really paying attention, and so he asks her to recap. The whole Star Wars trilogy, and it's just classic. It's it's just fantastic. But you, I think, in order for it to be funny, you kind of have to know Star Wars. So, like, so. should I not watch the? Yeah, I, yeah. Well, no. I, uh, I think any anything you decide to watch will get you hooked into it. Uh, because because there are little there are little homages and you know throwbacks and call outs and you're going to be like, well, what, what, why did you like that? Why was that funny? Why was that interesting? And then you'll have to go back and watch another movie in order to, um, it's almost kind of like the Marvel universe now. Like they just yeah. assume that you've seen all 38 of the movies. Uh, so yeah. it, it, it kind of tricks you into watching all of them and paying, yeah. you know, 10 bucks to watch each one. But, um, that, Star Wars did it unintentionally, yeah. Basically, so there's I'm just so much dumber though. You put me on the couch with a movie, I'll make it through like the first twenty minutes, and I'm like, snoozeville. <laughs> so I, I'm not like the best <laughs> to watch movies anyway. But if you know, quarantine has like really put me into like 
having to force myself to do, you can't sleep all day. So like some movies I did get through because I'm like, I kind of have to. I can't, yeah. I can't go to sleep. I just napped during the last one. Can't sleep during this one. So I have watched a few. Um, and, yeah. Well, if you do decide to watch Star Wars, there's a, there's a few great articles on the order that you're supposed to watch them in. So I would read that first before you decide to just jump in. I think you're right. I think it's much more cool that I can say I've never seen one. <laughs> I'll maybe watch The Mandalorian, but like, who else? I don't know. Somebody comment. Do you guys also like not see Star Wars? Because never. Literally never. <laughs> never. Uh, Is there any binge-worthy ones that you two watch that I should? Uh, yeah. JT, you go first on that one. Yeah. Um, boy, you talked about liking getting into golf. There's, there's a documentary that was done recently called uh, The Tiger Slam. And it was about Tiger Woods winning four consecutive majors. He didn't win them all in, in you know calendar year, which is the Grand Slam, but he he actually won four consecutive. So he owned all four trophies at the same time. See, and so, here's what it is, Jason. I told you I was never going to probably get into like the 18 hole effect. Just the, as hard as you can hit them, as far as they can go. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be like, you know, driving around in those golf carts and like oh, pulling up the hole number one hit. Like I don't like hitting the the little, the little golf, like the seven yeah. irons. I think that's, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't see those because I miss most of the time because the driver has such a bigger yeah. spot. So I can like hit those things and right. Other ones. right. Can, also people are, people don't know me. I'm like the mini golf champion. Do you know, Chris Barnes is actually literally was a mini golf champion. I'm really not. I'm not, I'm not great at it. But. Yeah. Okay. 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 But I, I, did, was gonna, see that. I did see uh, some old videos of him doing like some trick shots and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. He was on like this putt putt. Um, like it was like a big, yeah. Skins game. I, re I uh, remember seeing that. Yeah. 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 It's pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, so don't, don't putt for money against Chris Barnes. That's no, just no. not a good idea. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that would be a good, you know, good one. Cause I know you're into like, I mean, Tiger Woods is pretty cool. I mean, you know, yeah. just how, how much he was like, able to win and don't they have something going on this week? Golf has something big going on this week. The masters is this yeah. week. Yeah. Correct. Oh, good so idea. yeah. Um, although it's usually in April, uh, you know, they moved the tournament from uh, April to November. So it's going to be kind of interesting because the golf course is kind of the thing, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's like, uh, it's like the national bowling stadium, except for, you know, beautiful. And, well, not that the, not the, yeah. Not that the stadium's not beautiful. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't mean it that way. I just meant like it's, it's outdoors. It's nature. Yeah. Like, you know, the bowling stadium and I, and I know they did a remodel which i haven't even seen yet which is supposed to be awesome so uh anyway I'm trying to backpedal here but uh, uh Binge -worthy. one show that you absolutely love that i should watch every episode soon me or aaron but either one yeah i'll go first the go wire for it, aaron. the what the wire the wire yeah it's it's uh, most critics say it's the the greatest TV show that's ever been on television. See, here's my problem. Like, I get I can get into one episode and I'm like, God, this is boring. But like, some shows yeah. don't start until like three or four, where you're like, this is this is good. So unfortunately, The Wire is one of those shows where you, you really have to give it a yeah, chance. You, you, you have to dedicate yourself to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. An issue. So. Dedicator McGee over here. So. Uh, <laughs> one show that that does not. Well, there's. I'll recommend two. One is uh, Breaking Bad. I seen it. Like liked it. Okay. 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 And then the other one is. Uh, let me turn my uh, my thing here. But it's on the wall right here in my office. Lost. There's a light. It says Lost. Yeah, it's it's kind of glare, but Lost. It's the best network TV show that's ever been on. Oh, what I can say is The Office. If you haven't seen the, who hasn't? Like, oh yeah, The Office is great. binge worthy. Absolutely. Yeah. All day long. Yeah, yeah. But Lost is uh, if, okay. if you like you, you like writing and reading. Um, Lost is probably the most literary TV show ever uh, that's been on television. I feel like I, I may have started one and, and never like whatever because it's kind of like the one hundred. You ever see that? Like yeah. 
It was like yeah. one of those. I started it and then I just like poof. The one hundred was like a knockoff of Lost. Yeah. Okay. Right. So Lost. So was it was something. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. it's great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try the wire. I'll let you know how that goes. And Lost. <laughs> Yeah, you'll watch two episodes of The Wire. I it's think. like we have like a hurricane coming right now, so like I'm gonna be in. I'm not gonna be able Hunker to go take down. Ball, you know, yeah. and drive in to go bowling. So I'm gonna watch shows now. Some we're getting some some uh, Yellowstone. Some, yeah, Yellowstone. Better. Call uh, you may have oh. watched this one if you're. I have. A Breaking I have. Bad fan. Yeah. 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 All right. uh, El Camino is pretty good. That was that was a um, a sequel to uh, Breaking Bad. It's just Never a movie. It. Yeah, okay. it's it's really good with Aaron Paul, uh, Jesse Pinkman's character. You know the character Jesse Pinkman. It follows him after the events of uh, Breaking Bad. Cool. Really good. I'll watch that. Yeah, I, I liked Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad was one of the good uh, one a good show. Yeah, yeah. So El Camino. It's just kind of it's kind of a weird name, but there's a reason for it. It's on Netflix? Yeah. All right. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Oh, well, you got a lot a lot of work to do between now and January. I All these you. TV shows and <laughs> My detox though is is I can watch some some shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And watch watch the social dilemma because I will that'll justify your detox. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to watch that tonight. Actually, I was I was like worried to watch it because of all the feedback that like I got from it. But I should. Yeah, yeah. Certainly eye opening, uh, especially if you you said you wanted to have a family in the future. You'll definitely want to apply those rules to uh, that. Is again your, your another potential. reason somebody said the same thing to me. They're like, if you have kid, like you want to watch this for that reason. If you have kids, because of all the stuff that's been going on with like child trafficking and and all this stuff like that. Like it is so scary. So that's why I've been avoiding watching it. But yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, it's a scary movie, but also uh, eye opening. And, and I think important. a lot of people forget that too, when they're so open, like us as professional athletes too, like we share so much for that reason, because we have like good people, like our fans love to see like, to let you know what we're going on, what's going on with us. But then you have like, those moments where like some of this is not, you know, doesn't, doesn't need to be out there or, or whatever. So definitely a thing to consider. Yeah. 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 But I think, you know, when you do decide to turn on your social media, it'll also help, you know, to manage it better just because right. you'll understand, you know, maybe some of the reasons why you spent so much time on your phone. Right. So. Yeah, it's uh, I quarantine did that too. Like, what else did you have to do? Like, you you t were talking to people because you couldn't socially do that, you know, in person. Um, so I think of our phones became such a huge part of our life during those few months, like being away from work and not being able to see people and and whatever. Um, my way of connecting to people was through that, but then I forgot about like things that were important to me, and I don't need that all the time. You know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Your, your self care is super important. I think a lot of us, especially me, like I will wear myself thin for any, you know, anybody I care about because that's who I am, but then I'm too exhausted to do something for myself. Um, so that part of me is going to be more careful and going, moving forward with myself is making sure I have time to make sure self care is being taken care of. And, and that will, that would make 2021, uh, better because I'll be, you know, care for myself and be ready to put myself out there and keep going and moving forward. And if you're taking care of yourself physically and mentally, it, your body's going to do a lot for you. So. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to watching it. We're looking forward to seeing uh, your progress in 21 and uh, good luck. Thank you. With everything. Have a, a great, yeah. Great holidays. Yeah. Happy holidays to you guys. If I, cause I won't see you before then, but. Enjoy it. Be safe. Everybody listening and watching. Happy holidays to you guys too. And stay safe and all that good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. All right. All right. We uh yeah. Got we went back up into the hour and twenty range again. 
See, we and, took uh, a few weeks off, and now we're we're back in rhythm. So yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. It was got a good binge watch conversation going. Didn't look like it was going to go anywhere, but then all of a sudden, it, it just yeah, it, it was, uh, it was it great. Two different levels there towards the end. So definitely glad about that. Um, yeah, that was that was a great. Uh, Great interview. We have have a few comments in the uh, in the chat as well about uh, inspiring, motivational, and I could not agree more with uh, that chat with Taylor. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it just goes to show once again uh, just how deep the field is. You know, on the PWBA tour, uh, Taylor, somebody with a huge amount of firepower. I mean, she's won, you know, at every level, and uh, you know, I mentioned you know some of the team trials, you know events that she's had where she's just come out and just blistered the field for a day or two days or three days. Um, so she certainly got that, you know, what it takes to win. Um, and it's just going to be interesting to see her progress as, as we go. Um, you're a very thoughtful person, very intelligent person. Um, you know, and, and obviously incredibly talented bowler, uh, as well. So it's going to be fun to watch her and the rest of the crew, uh, starting up here in January. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. It's going to be here before we know it. But before that, we still have a few additional podcasts coming up this week. So, JT, I know uh, you're pretty excited about Wednesday coming up with Bowling Explained. Yeah, I am. I am excited. I mean, the, the reason that show exists is really to help people, right, help bowlers. And, uh, you know, whether it's talking about lane play or equipment or uh, health and fitness, mental game. And, and this one is, is going to be a lot of fun because it's, it's uh, we had Valerie Bercier. She was on our podcast. Then we had her on uh, Bowling Explained to talk more about her nu nutrition business. And uh, after one of the shows, I, I, I said, uh, hey, I wonder if you could help me with my own, you know, weight loss issues. And so uh, I w I've gone through her program. Uh, for it's been just over a month now. We're going to reveal the results on Wednesday, so I'm really looking forward to that. And um, you know, they were positive results. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. want to spoil it too much, but uh, uh, and and I really think that you know explaining it because it's something I've struggled with really my whole life uh, is going to help a lot of people. So I'm looking forward to that show on Wednesday. Excellent, excellent, and I can I can certainly vouch for that as well. So you're looking good, JT. Oh, thank looking you, looking good, my thank friend. You, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Thursday inside the OC, Matt Canzaro and I will be welcoming welcoming in Jay nephew to the show. So I'm looking forward to that chat with Jay. And then on Friday, the 20 greatest seasons were down to the top three, uh, highlighting yeah. Dylan Dorn Ballard's amazing 2001 season, seven wins, 18 shows, and 23 events, uh, winning the Queens as well. So. Uh, definitely a lot to uh, to look at that season, and and I'm sure you'll be pretty excited to put that video together too. I am. I'm. I, you know, the thing that's maybe the most amazing thing about that season was 18 of 23 TV finals she made, which is just, I mean, that's just insane. Eight. She made 18 shows in a season. Uh, wow. So yeah, and that's that wasn't even the top season of all time. So what the heck could the number one and two be that are that were better than, than this one? You'll have to find out every Friday. There you go. Yeah. Gotta, gotta leave them hanging for more. <laughs> <laughs> Always leave them wanting more, Aaron. That is, that is the key. All right, folks. Well, uh, that's going to wrap up this edition of the PWBA podcast. So we certainly appreciate you joining us here uh, on Bold TV. Uh, for our guests, Taylor Boltais, Jason Thomas, I'm Aaron Smith. Thank you again for joining us. Have a great week. And remember, folks, on Bowl TV, bowling lives here. We'll see you soon. Take care. Have a great week.